Well, hello, With Gratitude Matt listeners. My name is Matt Marie, and I'm the host for the With Gratitude Matt Show. Our goal with the show is to inspire our listeners to practice gratitude regardless of how powerful their storm is. I've learned that the practice of gratitude operates and works not too dissimilar from a muscle that you train. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. I'm so grateful to have today's guest on, Chris Gathers. Chris, is, Chris has been married to his wife, Nancy, for over 16 years, and they are raising two beautiful girls. Chris is a sales executive with Nationwide in their insurance division today. The thing that connected us to, to each other is how he's inspiring his, his audience on Instagram. Chris is a, is a brain cancer survivor. I should say, actually, a brain cancer warrior. Today, he is inspiring thousands on his Instagram page that he updates on a daily basis and shares experiences that he learned through fighting brain cancer. And it gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome Chris to the show. Welcome to the show today, Chris. Thank you so much, Matt. It's it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate the time. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I will certainly talk about your experience with the brain cancer that really connected us, but I'd love to hear from your perspective what it, like, what it was like being a Gather growing up in the Gather family. Well, there, there was quite a bit of, of turbulence growing up. Uh, I'll just start with that. That's probably the, the gentlest way to say it. Uh, I saw a lot of, of trauma. Uh, there, there were three divorces that I, I witnessed. I saw violence, um, mental health issues all around me, lots of depression. Um, and with that, you know, a ton of anxiety. So I, I would say that a lot of those things I spent years trying to unravel and feel and tripped along the way, uh, that, that was probably where I gained the majority of my strength in life. Now you want to talk about gratitude that it's a weird thing to say, but you know, through the challenges that you just mentioned, um, being able to fight through that early on really gave me the strength to fight what I'm fighting now. Well, you know, what's interesting. Uh, I appreciate sharing that sounds like not the best of, uh, experiences growing up, but the, the beautiful thing about it is, and I mentioned you've got two girls and you've been married to Nancy for 16 years. You're changing the paradigm for your family. And I know that, uh, your girls one day, if they're not already grateful for that, uh, they will be grateful for the, the, uh, I'll say the the framework that you you and Nancy are raising them in. No, no doubt about it. I you know I I'm a firm believer in that break the cycle idea of you know just because you witness something and it became uh, partially ingrained in you, uh, that doesn't mean that you need to continue that cycle and that behavior. I mean, it takes some self awareness and recognition. Uh, to this day, there are things that I still, as I'm sure most of the people watching this, you know, you're like, why well, that's, that's my mom right there. I mean, it's clear as day. That's how she would react. And, you know, so there's, there's that moment of, of recognition and cognition that, that it's there and that it needs to be altered. So yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that that's a, a it's a challenge worth undertaking. Well, you know, you, you actually just sitting here talking, you, you reminded me of what transpired at our household at uh, 7.30 this morning, minutes before our girls were supposed to get on the bus, and they, don't, they didn't have their shoes on, their socks on, and, you know, within a nanosecond, my wife asked me to go get socks and fill up their water bottles, and um, I think yeah. one other thing, go get their backpacks ready, and I'm like, okay, in what order do you want me to do this? Because I can only do one thing at a time. And I didn't say it that gracefully. Uh, sure. So I, I'm i a work in progress all the time. So 
Yeah, um, just trying to get like, better. Sounds like a familiar one. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I'd love to kind of move forward to that day that you found out and were told that you have brain cancer. What was the initial reaction by you and maybe even by Nancy um, and uh, how that impacted you early on? Well, this was during 2021, early 2021. So COVID regulations were in effect. They, they were starting to loosen up a bit in public, but in the hospital system, you know, basically you had visiting hours and they were to a confined period of time. So when I started to have seizure symptoms, I was fortunate enough to only be about five minutes away from a local urgent care center that had MRI capabilities. And my wife was traveling for work and she was about an hour, hour and a half away. So I drove myself over after the seizure symptoms subsided and I heard the news sitting there by myself because first they thought it was either a, a vascular issue and they were leaning more towards that, that it was some sort of vascular incident. And then they said, or it could be a, a brain tumor. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go with the first, uh, the first, for, for some reason, vascular issues seem more palatable to me. Um, I, I don't know why, but um, I like that answer better. So when she came back uh, from the MRI, you could just tell, I mean, this is a person, she was, she was a very young doctor. Um, she's at an urgent care center. You know, I brought my daughters to that urgent care center for like, you know, a sprained wrist or, a, you know, that type of thing. Here she is delivering a brain tumor discussion, you know, a diagnosis to someone on a random Friday afternoon. And she was shook. And she said, uh, I'm really glad that you came in today. And she left that hanging for a second. And I knew that this was going to be very bad news. Uh, so my reaction um, Matt was that I was dying, right? You know, I, I work in the insurance businesses, as you said, and I know enough about scary medical histories and the thought of a brain tumor and me being, uh, you know, quite anxious at times in my life and Googling things like headaches and, and all this, and you go down the glioblastoma route you know, the, the life expectancy is about two years. Uh, so I gave myself two years on the spot. I remember it felt like a slow move, you know, slow motion fallback onto this uh, 45 degree bed. And I sat there staring at the ceiling, thinking how incredibly terrible this is. You know, I'm 47 uh, at the time, and I have two wonderful children, a beautiful wife. I grew up primarily without father figures that were stable. And I thought how awful it is that I'm going to be leaving these girls in the same situation that I had. And that's truthfully what I felt. I felt like my world had just crumbled. And then my second thought, uh, you know, from that standpoint was, what can I do for the next two years that's going to make a difference? And, and what do I need to immediately stop doing that is dragging me and holding me down? And I decided at that moment that I was no longer going to focus on my past. I was no longer going to spend time logically trying to figure things out. I was just going to feel what I felt about the past and get it out as soon as possible. Dig into to the, you know, 
the scariest things that I could think of, face this head on and, and leave this world and my family's life better because of the next two years. That was it. I was going to live with no regrets. It was this very, it was almost an intra, I look back, it's, it almost was good that I was alone you know, from that perspective, because I had, I had this very clear, um, scary, but open thinking that I could do because there was no worrying about anything else. Yeah. I I think a lot of people that get the news that you got would probably react very similarly. I will say, and I'm grateful to say this, I feel like you know, your your perspective on life and your perspective on purpose and all of that is, is I, I want to compliment you on that today because I, I do really enjoy following you on Instagram and your daily messages. Um, you. And you're just really doing some remarkable work that is like quite diff- like quite different than the early on feelings that you were feeling about brain cancer. At what point did you like go to, I need to start producing material that other people can draw inspiration from versus I'll just say feeling sorry for myself and uh, down and out about the longevity that you may or may not have. Yeah, it was exactly a year later from my surgery. Uh, My surgery took place on March 2nd, 2021. And my company had a, an awards trip. We went out to Maui. You know, Maui has a way if you've been there of clearing your mind and being, you know, just completely relaxed and not much stress there. So I'm sitting there, my, uh, my wife and children, uh, actually were not allowed to attend the awards conference because they didn't allow children to, to be at the event. Uh, but it was still a free trip for someone. So uh, I invited my best man and my best friend to come out and be my guest. He came out the day that, you know, let me back up. My, my wife and kids came out for a week beforehand uh, because I think they would have killed me if they didn't get a chance to come out. My, my younger daughter was <laughs> threatening, I think, uh, in a quiet way. And so I had a great, amazing family time for a week uh, with them. And then I was sort of primed for my friend uh, to come out who we all have that, you know, one friend that we can say anything to. Um, it's, it's this, I feel like he's my twin. It's like whatever I experience, he experiences. It's like, you wouldn't believe the thought I had the other day about this or that. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I was just thinking about that. Or so we have this revolving, uh, similarity in our relationship and our experiences. So we've been saying, you know, I want to do something bigger and more purpose-filled. And so we sat there and he had just read me this. He's a songwriter, super talented, hasn't shared a lot with people in the world and what he does. So we got into this deep philosophical conversation. It was pretty late. And he's telling me about a song that he wrote. And he reads me the lyrics and it was the most um, beautiful song I'd ever heard him write. And probably one of the top 10 songs I had ever heard written. I mean, it was unbiasedly beautiful. And if you're watching, you need to put that out. Um, But it was so moving to me. And then he said, that song is about you. And it was all about inspiration and all about um, 
the love of, of friends and, you know, support and all of the things that we have together. And I woke up the next day and I said, I'm going to log on to Instagram and I'm going to start telling my story and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't care. I only have so much time left. I finally get it and I'm not waiting anymore. And it's similar to what you're doing, right? From, from this perspective, which I applaud you, um, you know, you took something that was difficult and turned it into something beautiful. you you know, to me, that's, we have these two choices. So culmination point, the name of my page is about that moment in your life. You can take two paths. You can say, stay submerged in the darkness or come out sheepishly and still keep getting dragged back. Or you can say, this is the moment that I can shed things that have been holding me back. I can recreate, I can reinvent um, because everything just crumbled. Now I can rebuild the way I want. And guess what? There's no more fear because I just looked into the abyss. I just saw what true fear is. I finally got it right? It's not that created fear that I had for years about blowing a presentation or this or that, you know, it's like, this is literally life or death. So That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing. A couple qu- follow-up questions to that if I could. So your buddy's song, um, has he, has anybody picked it up or has any, where, where is, that I, I the only reason I ask is I do have a friend that's also a songwriter in the country yeah. music world, and he hasn't had anything, I'll say hit yet. But I'm just curious if where where your friend is with respect to that song. He has still kept it to himself. It's a very okay. personal, you know. I think to him, um, it's a very personal journey that that yeah. he's on. He he is sort of tight to the vest with it. Uh, which is interesting because I was always pretty, you know, other than a circle of friends, I didn't really share what was going on with my life. And it's funny now I chose Instagram and I, I, I'm like, Oh, you know, here's my childhood and here's my cancer and here's this. And here's, you know, it's like, I was complete. I'm just reading a book now called broken open. And it feels like I'm just been broken open. So, um, yeah. So, one other thing that uh, you mentioned, and I'm glad you did. So you talked about the date of your surgery. And I remember we, when we first connected, there was uh, an interesting, I'll call it coincidence with respect to the actual surgery date. And I think it would be important for you to share with our listeners what that meant to you and your wife. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, my father-in-law uh, was absolutely uh, one of the the strongest, bravest, kindest people um, this world's seen. Uh, extremely religious, um, just absolutely always guiding people with his heart and what he felt was right. Uh, would be there at the drop of a dime for anybody. And I always admired that about him because, um, you know, when he was around, um, cause he, he ended up passing and I'll tie that in in a second. But he, when he was around, I always thought, how is he so open and, and out and, you know, just with everyone, just that person. And he ended up passing away unexpectedly on March 2nd of, uh, of 2019. And it was devastating, absolutely devastating uh, for my wife, uh, for me, uh, for my uh, daughters, my brother-in-law. Everyone just loved him. Everyone at his... Um, that he dealt with uh, in the public, uh, everything. Uh, it was it was tough. 
So I was slated to have surgery on March 16th, I believe, of 2021. And I'm talking to, uh, my wife and I are speaking with the neurologist, um, I'm sorry, the, the neurosurgeon at Brigham and Women's. And she said, it looks like there's an opening on March 2nd. Would you like to come in a couple of weeks early and have your surgery? And this uh, feeling of scary warmth, that's the only way I can describe it. Uh, because I was half like, that's a very tough date from an emotional standpoint. Um, but Nancy, my wife and I both answered almost simultaneously, like, yes. And then we knew that he was there. You know, he was going to, he guided this date. He guy he was going to be there for the surgery, and it strengthened my belief in angels. And you know, he was clearly an angel while he was here. Um, clearly, an angel who got me through a thirteen-hour surgery. And um, we feel him all the time. You know, when when there's something going on in our family. That's either beautiful or tough. Um, you can always just feel his presence guiding us to do the right stuff. So it, it's so it's a very important date. It turned from a, a solemn date into a celebratory date. So I thought on March 2nd, 2021, I was like, I'm going to go make that page for not only myself and my family, but you know, everyone that can watch it, but him as well. Cause I know that's what he would want me to have done. He wanted, he would have wanted me to see the light that he's shown on this thing. So that's, un that's an unbelievable coincidence and um, happy that he was there to support you not only during the surgery, but on, on, on and beyond. I know um, when we first connected, I, I shared with you a little bit about, uh, what my, a friend of mine wrote in the book Healing Before Your Cure, that's Roy Von Thomas' book. He talks a little bit about the integration of your spiritual health, your mental health, your emotional health, and your physical health. And I, I think when we first connected, there was there was some common ground with respect to you know how you look at things. And I guess what resonated with you when I talked about that integration and if you think about it from a houses of health perspective, is there any one that you think is um, more important to you than, than another? I would say that, you know, first I, I always start off with as much as possible, like to recover. I knew that the physical standpoint was going to be the biggest hurdle to be to be able to focus on the mental and spiritual um, and the, and emotional sides of things. However, after my surgery, when I started to actually take walks, it became a spiritual process for me. Right, so I was healing myself through physical activity because I know I needed to get out and get active and get blood moving and reduce. Um, inflammation in my body, my movement. But it became so um, spiritually healing. I remember we have a, a lake near our house uh, that, that I do a lot of my videos around when I'm walking my dogs. And there is, um, there's this peace from a spiritual standpoint. I feel it instantly. It's like... Um, I'm sure we all have these places where it's like the moment you go there, your blood pressure goes down, you breathe easier. It's just, and so I, I believe many times, you know, um, my father-in-law is there with me. My, um, my grandfather, who was my real male role model growing up is there with me. There's a connection to that. There's a connection to God, obviously, because of the beauty of what I'm seeing. 
So it's, it's tough for me to pick all of, you know, I would say though, the spiritual thing, um, I think I went into a thinking physical when I was walking all those miles, but it became a spiritual thing. So to me, I don't think you can have the others without starting with like a spiritually sound center, you know, and That's just awesome. being centered. Uh, so out. along those lines, I, so um, obviously, you know, you know, a little bit of, I mean, we have a show around gratitude. I mean, my, I, my personal belief is that we just need to, and I didn't start the show with the intent of helping other people find, you know, a relationship with God and Jesus Christ, so on and so forth. But it's kind of turned into that. Um, but what I've found is my spiritual life has really changed since I, since I have been diagnosed with kidney cancer and that I'm grateful for because I think what I found is the closer I get to, to him and the real relationship that I have, a lot of the anxiety I have around other things goes away. And I'm just curious on your end, have you had a similar experience to that? Oh yeah. I mean, I was raised, um, I was raised Roman Catholic growing up and, um, because of all the turmoil in my house uh, and a lot of pain that I felt um, almost like, a, why would this happen if there was a God? Why, why would I have so much pain in my childhood, in my teenage years, in my adult life, right? And then what ended up happening is this shook me to the core, uh, to the fact that, yeah, I mean, I, I've come back to it because to me, it's a miracle. I'm here. It's a miracle. I didn't get that tarot. You know, I could be gone in, you know, less than a year. No, I mean, three months. Right. I mean, I found out February of 2021, this could be it. This is my, one of my last conversations, the fact that everything aligned and I found the right surgeon and things were done, um, so precisely and without deficit upon my, on, upon me. And they're, you know, as the surgeon kept saying, there's a millimeter that matters. And when you hear someone say, uh, it's a millimeter that matters, it can literally mean the difference between, you know being okay and not being okay after surgery. That's, that's a God thing. You know, you, you can say whatever you want about technology, right? But um, someone is guiding that hand. And so it's a very spiritual process. And if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share a 30 second story about something I think from a spiritual basis, I, I was, I got, I grew very close to uh, one of the fellows that worked on the neurosurgeons team. And we were talking the next day after the surgery, and I was still coming out of anesthesia. And he said, boy, it's great to see you cognitively here, you know, like discussing things and like understanding me and everything. I'm like, man, that anesthesia is, is, yeah, it was heavy. He goes, no. And he's like, we got new software six months prior to your surgery that we had never used before. And it enabled us to probably take out another 20, 25% of the tumor. And he said, there was a moment where out of, when we tried to take you out of anesthesia, you didn't wake up. And the doctor and I looked at each other and thought, we, within our eyes, we were looking at each other thinking, we did too much. So to me, there was a moment in those 13 hours that I almost didn't make it. Now going into that, 
I didn't, for some reason, I didn't think, I just thought, oh, these are capable, you know, they obviously were capable, but I didn't know that. So God guided them in a way to get me out because there was Indeed. a bigger thing for me to do. Indeed. Um, I just got goosebumps as you shared that story, as I know a lot of our listeners will as well. And I'm so grateful that uh, the surgeons, with God's assistant, were able to do what they were able to do. And yeah. uh, I know that uh, that two-year period is going to be up soon, but we'll continue to pray that you've got tenfold of that in you, yes. 20 plus, maybe 30 plus. Um, yeah. you still need to walk your girls down the aisle someday, right? Yeah. I mean, the, you know, luckily, you know, the good news kept coming, uh, because the prognosis is good. Um, it's as good as you can get with a malignant brain tumor. You know, it's a, it's a, um, a stage two, uh, it's a low grade oligodendroglioma, a term I wish I, you know, <laughs> name of a brain tumor. I wish I never knew. Uh, it's very rare and, uh, the life expectancy can be as much as 20 plus years. So to me, uh, the surgeon did their job. God did his job. Uh, and I'm here. And so Just, I'm going to one comment with respect to life expectancy on any pan cancer patient. And I'm going to, I'll ask you question sure. follow up to this as well but um for anybody that is either recently diagnosed with cancer uh, or going through the cancer journey that chris and i have walked um just remember this the statistics themselves do not include you right they don't include you and therefore the statistics really shouldn't matter a whole lot to you because Chris, I know this to be true. You're stronger physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually than most people that came before you. But I, I love how you're, you know, enriching your spiritual life. You're embracing your physical side of the equation and all that sort of stuff. But um, Chris, what would you say or what, advice might you give to that individual that recently heard that they have cancer and it may not be brain cancer it might be something else but sure. what could you what could you advise them to uh either think about or do as they um prepare for the journey that's ahead of them hmm. i would say first be patient and compassionate towards yourself and feel it when you're ready to, to feel what it is, you know, feel everything, you know, it, it's gotta be a, you know, there were moments when I found this out that for six to nine months, probably where I would just close myself off into a room and just cry uncontrollably for hours. And my wife, you know, has had such grace and, and just, you know, cause she's a very positive, upbeat person. And she just, um, you know, I just did that. So, so to me, the first from a mental and emotional standpoint is feel it, you know, um, it's going to be tough. There's going to be moments of denial. Uh, stay off Google. That would be, that would be the other thing I would do instantly. Uh, I did that a couple of times. I went down the Google, um, uh, whatever they call that. Um, it, it was not good. Yeah, th there was a lot of scary things on Google. And as you just touched on, nothing applies to our situation. Um, and then the other thing that I would recommend above that uh, is find a really, really good doctor. Um, like don't take just 
whatever that first person that you go to, if you don't feel comfortable and you don't feel empathy and you don't feel support um, and a good team around that person, uh, go to the next one. This is, this is a serious situation. It's not a, I, you know, I sprained my knee. This is a, you know, I need somebody that's going to be knowledgeable, empathetic, and make me feel comfortable from the jump. When I know, Chris, you mentioned Brigham's earlier. Uh, you know this because we talked about it, but I, um, I also am treated out of Boston, Dana Farber Cancer Institute, who's affiliated with Brigham's. And um, I think it's interesting. I can't agree with you more about finding the right doctors. Chris does not live in Boston either. He's out of Connecticut. So that's not in your backyard, but they're doing some remarkable things out of that, uh, that institution and so grateful for everything that uh, the entire Brigham's women's and Dana Farber's doing. So. They're amazing. Um, amazing. They really, they, they truly are. Chris, love to t- just kind of move a little bit. I touched on it a little bit around gratitude, but how does gratitude play a role in your life today? And maybe how has it changed uh, since the, the, the cancer diagnosis? Whew. I mean, gratitude is everything for me right now. It, it is my life. Um, don't always, I don't always hit the mark, you know, with what I want to do or need to do or how I want to live. Um, but gratitude always brings me back to what I need to be doing. So it, it is those moments um, with my kids or my wife or my friends where I might be taking it for granted in the moment, you know, just in my own head or preoccupied on my phone or whatever it is that's going on. And I think, and I really got, I've got to get back to just appreciating where I'm at, the setting I'm at, the people I'm with, um, the gifts that I have. Um, you know, I went to Dana Farber yesterday uh, luckily had a stable scan and you sit there and you look around and you see people that are in wheelchairs. You see young children, uh, suffering through some of these things and fighting through them. Um, to me, the perspective of gratitude is massive even when I feel overwhelmed by what's going on with me, I make sure to look around so that I can appreciate the most basic things like walking, right? I value my walks with my dogs and, you know, being able to record my videos and being able to speak. And when we go through what we go through, um, it instantly reminds us of how beautiful life is, but it needs to be an open process filled of gratitude and being thankful for the smallest of things, because it's really what it's all about. We overcomplicate life sometimes, um, you know, looking for, well, if I only got that, I would be happy. Or if I only did this, I'd be happy. If I only got a job promotion or more money. All of that at the end of our life, I would never sit. I pictured myself, you know, many times sitting on my ultimate final spot, whatever that is, and thinking like, would I ever care about any of this? Like small stuff. Or would I think I am so happy that I got to spend my life with such amazing people and doing such amazing things with them? That's what gratitude is. And and that's what life's purpose is. It's no greater than that. It's just filling, you know, opening your heart with love and loving the people around you and have and receiving that back is life. That's that's gratitude. Um, to me, it's, 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. As we wrap up, Chris, um, I one last question. I've asked all of my guests a similar question. I'm going to ask it to you maybe in a little bit different twist. But if you think about, I mean, you've been through a lot the last eight, well, I'll call it 23, 24 months or whatever, um, getting to where you are today. It's been a lot. Um, I'd love to hear your perspective on it could be that that hurdle of you going through uh, walking the cancer journey that you're on today could be something else. But is there something in your life that you've experienced? And if it's the cancer journey, love to hear more perspective on that. But that as you look back on it, it was very devastating to go through it. But after you went through that fire, if you will, you're able to look back on that experience and say, wow, I grew so much as a result of that experience that I'm almost grateful that it happened. And if it's the cancer journey, love to hear your perspective on that. If it's something else, love to hear that too. But uh, love to hear you how you might respond to that. Oh, that, that's, I love that question. Um, I talk about it a lot to, uh, whoever will listen. I think, you know, my, my page is a lot about that. Uh, my family hears it all the time. I think some people think it's crazy to appreciate cancer as a gift. Um, but I believe I was sleepwalking a lot before this. I, I think I, <clears throat> Uh, spent a lot of time in my own head, um, looking past uh, sunsets and, you know, just wrapped up in worrying and um, taking my eye off the ball. So this, um, that's the first part of it. Cancer stopped me from doing that. It, it made me say, stop. <laughs> Look at that, because this might be the last time you see that in your life. Um, and then the second part of it is what I talked about with being open. Um, I never, uh, being an only child with someone in, you know, with surrounded by a, a kind of a structure that was muddied and, and didn't have much um, guidance, um, I ended up feeling very closed off and also solving problems on my own, never asking for help, um, never wanting to truly be a burden on anybody, never wanting to share, you know, because I thought, well, why would they want to hear my issues? Because then, you know, I'm just going to become that negative person to them. And then uh, this forced me to be vulnerable. This forced me to ask for help. This forced me to say I'm weak right now. I can't do it. I literally can't. You know, there were times I couldn't even add basic math. I was looking at my daughter's second grade homework and I was like, this word problem is impossible, right? I'm not the greatest math student, but I know I could do second grade math. But it made me, it forced me out of my bound up, um, head centered way of living and made me more heart centered. It forced me to say, I need help. I need a hand. Um, and it forced me to offer more help because I saw the good in people. I saw the beauty of people now because I saw the outpouring of support and love that frankly was always there probably. I just never allowed myself to feel it out of fear of being hurt. And now I'm open up and I'm like, What's the worst thing I can that can happen to me? It sure isn't, you know, somebody just not being kind to me. I've been through the fire, so I've seen it. So to me, that to answer your question, it's a multifaceted appreciation for my cancer. Um, I would never give it back because it was a wake up call. That is remarkable. That is truly remarkable, Chris. And I'm so grateful that we connected. I know our listening audience is going to really enjoy getting to you, getting to know you better. And I encourage all of you to follow uh, Chris on his Instagram page. Um, he puts out some remarkable work that certainly inspired me and it can inspire you as well. 
Um, I, Chris, I can't, I, I wish you all the best as you continue to, uh, to grow and to develop and, um, fast forwarding 20, 30 years down the road. I look forward to celebrating with you because I know that, uh, you are only tipping the surface as to what you're really called to do. And I know you're helping so many through the help, help or you're helping so many, uh, face the challenges that are right in front of them. I, I like to talk about three things I do each and every day to help me, and I'd, li- I'd like to share it again. The first of which is find the courage to be grateful, regardless of how powerful your storm is. Secondly, be truly present to those that are right in front of you. You'd be amazed at the gifts that are right in front of you, but if you're closed off, you're not going to experience them. And lastly, pay attention to how you're feeding your mind, your body, and your soul. Today's guest was my new friend, Chris Gathers. Chris, it was such an honor to have you on today's show. Listening audience, if today's show inspired you in some way, shape, or form, share it with others, comment on it, and subscribe to your subscribe to our show. With gratitude, Matt listeners, until next time, find the courage to be grateful. Godspeed, my friends. <laughs>